Iris recognition is an automated method of biometric identification that uses mathematical pattern recognition techniques on video images of one or both of the irises of an individual size, whose complex patterns are unique, stable, and can be seen from some distance. Retinal scanning is a different, ocular-based biometric technology that uses the unique patterns on a person's retina blood vessels and is often confused with iris recognition. Iris recognition uses video camera technology with subtle near-infrared illumination to acquire images of the detail-rich, intricate structures of the iris which are visible externally. Digital templates encoded from these patterns by mathematical and statistical algorithms allow the identification of an individual or someone pretending to be that individual. Databases of enrolled templates are searched by matcher engines at speeds measured in the millions of templates per second per single core CPU, and with remarkably low false match rates. Several hundred million persons in several countries around the world have been enrolled in iris recognition systems for convenience purposes such as passport-free automated border crossings and some national ID programs. A key advantage of iris recognition, besides its speed of matching and its extreme resistance to false matches, is the stability of the iris as an internal and protected, yet externally visible organ of the eye. First the system has to localize the inner and outer boundaries of the iris, pupil and limbus in an image of an eye. Further subroutines detect and exclude eyelids, eyelashes, and specular reflections that often occlude parts of the iris. The set of pixels containing only the iris, normalized by a rubber sheet model to compensate for pupil dilation or constriction is then analyzed to extract a bit pattern encoding the information needed to compare two iris images. In the case of Dogman's algorithms, a Gabor Wavelet transform is used. The result is a set of complex numbers that carry local amplitude and phase information about the iris pattern. In Dogman's algorithms, most amplitude information is discarded and the 2048 bits representing an iris pattern consist of phase information complex sign bits of the gabor wavelet projections. Discarding the amplitude information ensures that the template remains largely unaffected by changes in illumination or camera gain, and contributes to the long-term usability of the biometric template. For identification one-to-many template matching or verification one-to-one -one template matching, a template created by imaging an iris is compared to stored templates in a database. If the Hamming distance is below the decision threshold, a positive identification has effectively been made because of the statistical extreme improbability that two different persons could agree by chance collide in so many bits, given the high entropy of iris templates. The iris of the eye has been described as the ideal part of the human body for biometric identification for several reasons. It is an internal organ that is well protected against damage and wear by a highly transparent and sensitive membrane, the cornea. This distinguishes it from fingerprints, which can be difficult to recognize after years of certain types of manual labor. The iris is mostly flat and its geometric configuration is only controlled by two complementary muscles, the sphincter pupillae and dilator pupillae, that control the diameter of the pupil. This makes the iris shape far more predictable than, for instance, that of the face. The iris has a fine texture that, like fingerprints, is determined randomly during embryonic gestation. Like the fingerprint, it is very hard, if not impossible, to prove that the iris is unique. However, there are so many factors that go into the formation of these textures, the iris and fingerprint, that the chance of false matches for either is extremely low. Even genetically identical individuals and the left and right eyes of the same individual have completely independent iris textures. An iris scan is similar to taking a photograph and can be performed from about 10 centimeters to a few meters away. There is no need for the person being identified to touch any equipment that has recently been touched by a stranger, thereby eliminating an objection that has been raised in some cultures against fingerprint scanners, where a finger has to touch a surface, or retinal scanning, where the eye must be brought very close to an eyepiece, like looking into a microscope. 
the commercially deployed iris recognition algorithm, John Dogman's iris code, has an unprecedented false match rate better than 10-11 if a hamming distance threshold of 0.26 is used, meaning that up to 26% of the bits in two iris codes are allowed to disagree due to imaging noise, reflections, etc., while still declaring them to be a match. While there are some medical and surgical procedures that can affect the color and overall shape of the iris, the fine texture remains remarkably stable over many decades. Some iris identifications have succeeded over a period of about 30 years. Iris recognition works with clear contact lenses, eyeglasses, and non-mirrored sunglasses. Many commercial iris scanners can be easily fooled by a high-quality image of an iris or face in place of the real thing. The scanners are often tough to adjust and can become bothersome for multiple people of different heights to use in succession. The accuracy of scanners can be affected by changes in lighting. Iris scanners are significantly more expensive than some other forms of biometrics, as well as password and proximity card security systems. Iris scanning is a relatively new technology and is incompatible with the very substantial investment that the law enforcement and immigration authorities of some countries have already made into fingerprint recognition. Iris recognition is very difficult to perform at a distance larger than a few meters and if the person to be identified is not cooperating by holding the head still and looking into the camera. However, Several academic institutions and biometric vendors are developing products that claim to be able to identify subjects at distances of up to 10 meters, standoff iris or iris at a distance, as well as three internationals iris on the move for persons walking at speeds up to 1 meter slash seconds. As with other photographic biometric technologies, iris recognition is susceptible to poor image quality, with associated failure to enroll rates. As with other identification infrastructure, national residents' databases, ID cards, etc., civil rights activists have voiced concerns that iris recognition technology might help governments to track individuals beyond their will. Researchers have tricked iris scanners using images generated from digital codes of stored irises. Criminals could exploit this flaw to steal the identities of others. The first study on surgical patients involved modern cataract surgery and showed that it can change iris texture in such a way that iris pattern recognition is no longer feasible or the probability of falsely rejected subjects is increased. As with most other biometric identification technology, a still not satisfactorily solved problem with iris recognition is the problem of live tissue verification. The reliability of any biometric identification depends on ensuring that the signal acquired and compared has actually been recorded from a live body part of the person to be identified and is not a manufactured template. Many commercially available iris recognition systems are easily fooled by presenting a high-quality photograph of a face instead of a real face, which makes such devices unsuitable for unsupervised applications, such as door access control systems. The problem of live tissue verification is less of a concern in supervised applications, for example, immigration control, where a human operator supervises the process of taking the picture. Methods that have been suggested to provide some defense against the use of fake eyes and irises include changing ambient lighting during the identification, switching on a bright lamp, such that the pupillary reflex can be verified and the iris image be recorded at several different pupil diameters. Analyzing the 2D spatial frequency spectrum of the iris image for the peaks caused by the printer dither patterns found on commercially available fake iris contact lenses. Analyzing the temporal frequency spectrum of the image for the peaks caused by computer displays. Other methods include using spectral analysis instead of merely monochromatic cameras to distinguish iris tissue from other material. Observing the characteristic natural movement of an eyeball, measuring nystagmus, tracking eye while text is read, etc. Testing for retinal retroreflection, red eye effect, or for reflections from the eyes for optical surfaces, front and back of both cornea and lens, to verify their presence position and shape. Another proposed method is to use 3D imaging, for example, 
stereo cameras to verify the position and shape of the iris relative to other eye features. A 2004 report by the German Federal Office for Information Security noted that none of the iris recognition systems commercially available at the time implemented any live tissue verification technology. Like any pattern recognition technology, live tissue verifiers will have their own false reject probability and will therefore further reduce the overall probability that a legitimate user is accepted by the sensor.